Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us for a very special episode of Our Nature Stories, following the Traveling Nature Journal of the Los Gatos Library. Today, we're visiting our friends at Emma Pruch Farm Park in San Jose to learn about bees. You guessed it. Robert Martinez, who keeps bees at Emma Pruch Farm Park, is going to show us everything that goes into beekeeping, from the tools to the bee suit and even a live beehive inspection. So we're going to learn all about the bees here at the park, as well as the native bees here in the Santa Clara Valley. So get a pencil, some paper, and maybe some colored pencils, crayons, or watercolor, anything to do some art and journal along with us, and join us for a visit to Emma Pruch Farm Park. certified by the University of California as a master beekeeper. All I'm trying to do is help them. Bees have been existing for millions of years before humans decided they were going to keep bees. Mm -hmm. Really and truly, what we do as beekeepers is try to help them survive and then in return for our help, we harvest their honey. This is a honey frame, brand new from the store. Mm -hmm. The wood is brand new and the foundation, the plastic foundation has been coated with a thin layer of beeswax. If you drag your finger along it, you can feel a waxy texture mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. Right? I'm going to pull the frame out and then I'm going to hold it to you and then I'm going to show you both perfect. sides. Perfect. Perfect. Okay? And then I'm going to put it back. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to open up lower in the box or higher depending upon where they're laying the brood chamber. Nice. And that's where their babies are. Okay. So a bee box will have their pantry, which is their honey and their pollen, which they collect and they eat and then they will have their nursery where they lay the where the queen lays the eggs we're going to be dealing with european honeybees european not honeybees. native to the united states okay they were brought over to this country many many years ago and brought into the santa clara valley to help pollinate our fruit trees Landing board, nursery box, otherwise in bee lingo called a brood box because of its height, which means the frame is bigger than the honey super in bee lingo because it supersedes the other boxes. It's on the very top and it'll have the honey. And notice nobody's come to attack me, mm -hmm. right? And I'm like, a threat and, and they see it but they ignore me so that's a very key indicator of the temperament in this particular strain of bee move very slowly you're not perceived as a threat and then they ignore you and go about their business because they got work to do right they're very very busy all right um, this is a highly decorative top box top lid and you will I'm gonna go gently and slowly They've already started to fill honey in. You can see it glisten, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If I rock it back and forth, you look down inside, 
and you can see so they're, they're building out the foundation with comb honeycomb and then they're filling with honey here's one on the back side that they have filled out and have not put any honey in because it's on the outside of the box i'm going to leave it out to give me room to work inside now if they were all getting aggressive i would reach down i'd give it a couple of puffs and it would signal to them that the honey colony that the colony living in a tree is in danger of a forest fire and they said what do you do before you have to leave you eat 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 as much as you can because you can't carry it with you right and then you go so by hitting them with some smoke it triggers a reaction in them to not go and fight me but to go eat because they think there's a fire so it's just doing a couple of things and keeping them calm and as long as i stay calm and move slowly everything should go very well right now it's about 85 to 90 percent capped honey if you look down inside the uncapped areas you'll see honey glistening poke your finger right there poke it break it go Ooh. now taste it you too yeah i want to try it yep Ooh, yeah. look at that <laughs> look what i have on my oatmeal this morning and i'm just looking to see and they're bringing back and resources nectar from blooming plants uh -huh. and are making honey and they do that by taking the nectar from the flower inside their body oh wow that's busy oh okay this is a different frame here's honey capped cell you see how it's kind of dome shaped yeah you see this yeah it's flat this has larva okay. inside it this is a nursery frame okay and you'll see different size white blobs at the bottom of the cells and the different size is the different age okay. of the larva and if we keep looking we might see eggs tiny little a third of the size of a grain of rice down in the bottoms and on this side is a few cells they're moving to this side and starting so they put a little food and then they have babies in the middle okay i'm gonna i'm just doing an inspection i've already showed you both kinds there's a drop of honey that fell i always point out the bees have been doing just fine without humans for a very long time and they will continue to do fine long after humans have left right, this is one of the frames that i brought Don't want anybody getting excited See the difference in size? Mm -hmm. See the pattern? I'm going to put the honey super back. And alignment is crucial. Like that. Put my inner cover back. So you see one buzz in my face? Yeah. It's a defender. Right? I walked away from the smoke and he came after me. And that 
includes a normal hive inspection. Very nice. Hi everyone, it's Librarian Jen, and I am just back from our visit to Empush Farm Park and seeing all the bees and learning so much about them from Robert. And so at this point, I am excited to do my own nature journaling about bees. I decided to just go outside here at the library and see which what bees I could find and see what they were up to. And and wow, was I excited. I found so many bees out there doing so many cool things. So I decided that what I would do is I have um, some photos that I took of the places I found bees and some places where I didn't find bees that sort of surprised me. And um, I printed those photos out. I'm going to put them in the nature journal and just record some of the observations I had of the bees and other creatures I found around these various plants. So let me show you how that looks. Okay, so here is my nature journal page or the start of my nature journal page. And um, before I got to this point, I went outside, I took my camera and I took my clipboard and I made some notes. I shot some video, which I'll share with you as we go and I took some photos. Um, the photos are the things that you see printed here. And I didn't even have specific questions. I just walked up to the plants and I looked for bees and said, what's happening with these bees? And uh, I let myself get inspired from there. So what I'm gonna do, I mean, this is nature journaling at its most basic, right? We have some photos, I have a pen, <laughs> and I have a pencil, and I'm gonna share my notes with you and I'll let you see some of the video that I took as we go. So the first place I went to look for bees, Librarian Grace gave me a hint and she said, the lavender in front of the library always has lots of bees. So the um, lavender is right by the street. Um, and there's a yellow fire hydrant out there and there's quite a bit of it. And there were so many bees out there. So I just went and stood in front of the lavender for a few minutes and, and watched the bees do their thing. And I started to notice um, a few patterns for one thing, the bees were always moving. Let me just switch to pencil. This is the lavender. The bees were moving around a lot. They would go from flower to flower to flower to flower. So they were either collecting nectar or pollen. Um, and I honestly, I don't really know the difference at this point. I know that Robert was telling us about the bees coming back to the hive with pollen all over their bodies. That's that yellow, orange, sticky stuff. These bees did not seem to be having um, yellow, orange, sticky stuff on them. They looked pretty clean. They were clean bees. So I'm thinking they were maybe drinking nectar. Um, and so if they're drinking nectar, I think that's fuel. It's like their food. I'm wondering, I think it's the moving of moving from flower to flower with pollen on them that pollinates the flowers. So is it not pollination season? Is this just the time of year when they do, does lavender not have big poofy yellow pollen? Um, I don't know. Does lavender have less noticeable pollen? So if you are looking for a spot where you can find a great many bees, very busy moving from flower to flower, may I recommend the patch of lavender in front of the library. The next place that I went was to this plant that is um, really close to the bike racks by the library. And I had to take a photo and share it in iNaturalist to get, um, to get a general type of plant and I think this is some type of rosemary and that kind of matches up with what it looks like and what the, the leaves of the plant look like if you've cooked with rosemary it looks something like that so I think this is a rosemary plant and the first thing I noticed at the rosemary was that I didn't see a bee right off what I saw at first was a wasp and um, the wasp has a very different body shape than the bee, has um, a very narrow portion of its body and the shape of the, its tail or its stinger is very different. And then I noticed it was actually a couple wasps and they were behaving like the bees. They were moving from flower to flower. Um, and so 
perhaps they were also eating or collecting um, or drinking um, nectar. Um, there were a few bees on the rosemary, but there were more wasps. Um, and then on the ground right by the rosemary, I saw another bee-type creature that didn't look quite like a honeybee, like the European honeybees that Robert was showing us. This bee was on the ground, just kind of um, sleeping, not feeling well, taking a break, maybe not, maybe was no longer with us. That one was um, like, I wanna say silver and gray, didn't have the yellow that I associate with this honeybee. The next place I checked out was the crepe myrtle trees. And it was difficult to look closely at the bees because they were high above my head. But I could see that there were lots of bees here too. And though I can't see the bees closely, I can see that they are moving from flower to flower. They were beautiful as I looked up at them. They were, their wings were lit by the sun. Um, and it was, made me think about um, when the bees are active and their response to sunlight. Sometimes when I go out first thing in the morning, I'll see a bee on the ground moving very slowly. And I think that's because the bee is still warming up. It could be a bee at the end of its life, but sometimes if you watch, it will perk up a bit as the day gets a little warmer. So this was in the middle of the day that I was out looking at all of these plants and the bees were very active. Um, one thing I might do is go back out um, maybe in the morning when I come to work before it gets really warm or before the sun's up, maybe if it's even a foggy morning, and see if I see the same number of bees. And I could note those changes in bee activity at these plants where I saw lots of bees before and notice if it's different when the, the weather is um, a little chillier or if the sun's not up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have my name up here. I put my name on our nature journal and I put down the date that I did these observations, it's late June, and I was in Los Gatos. Um, I will put a note here that it was a bright, sunny afternoon, so that I know what the conditions were like. When, oops, I'm sorry. No, so I know what the conditions were like when I made these observations. Okay, so after I visited the crepe myrtle, I started moving towards the lawn, and I found this sage plant. I think it's a Mexican sage. And I had to watch for a while before I found any bees. Um, I was starting to notice that the plants where I had seen a lot of bees, that like the purple plants, there was, a, there was the purple lavender and that the purple blue flowers of the rosemary. I was starting to wonder if the, I mean, in the bright pink flowers of the crepe myrtle, does the flower of the plant make a difference? I'm gonna ask that question here in my book. Does the, um, there were just a few bees, not very many. It also could be the density of the flowers on the rosemary and the crepe myrtle and the lavender, there were lots of blossoms close together. On the sage, there were fewer blossoms um, and they were further apart. So it could be there just wasn't as much food to be had or as much nectar to be had from the sage at this time. Um, I'm wondering if there's something about flower density, the number of flowers close together that make a difference. I'll just jot that question down. Then I went on a hunt. Once I saw the Mexican sage, I was thinking, oh, there's a bunch of roses over by the, um, the entrance to the uh, Civic Center. I thought there would be quite a few bees on those roses. And I went to look, and there were no bees there. There were no bees on the roses. And I found these, um, I think they're gardenias. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put together this, this, this picture is gonna represent the roses. And either these are a type of rose or maybe they're gardenias because no bees, no bees there. So I looked closely at the inside of these flowers. I looked for pollen grains. 
Inside the roses, I saw some different small insects, but no bees. So this was a case where even not finding something to look at felt like it was a piece of information. So that was just whatever it is that the bees like. At the, on this day in late June, in full sun, these plants didn't have it. They were not interested in the roses. And then in the um, pots over by the fountain, up on the, in the Civic Center fountain, there's some beautiful potted flowers. And I found this plant. This is another type of sage. I found this incredibly cool looking creature. And I think, um, having done a little bit of research, I think it's a large carpenter bee. Very black, very shiny, very busy, exhibiting the same behavior that I had seen the other bees. Same flower to flower behavior. At first I thought it might be some sort of beetle, but I believe this is a bee. You can, he's, he's here in this picture, but you probably can't see him very well, so I'll show you in the video. So I watched, I watched this creature for a while, um, and there were actually two or three of them around this sage, so that made me wonder why this type of bee chose this plant. And I didn't see this bee in any of the other plants where I saw the honeybees. There were also a few honeybees on this plant as well. And then I wondered, were the honeybees, did the honeybees have any um, reaction to this large carpenter bee? Um, were there fewer honeybees here because the carpenter bees liked this plant? That was an interesting observation. I watched those creatures for quite a while. They were very cool. And then the last place I made observations, I was packing, moving, getting ready to head back into the library, and I was crossing the lawn, and I thought, oh my gosh, of course. this is <laughs> I've actually been stung by a bee on this lawn. This is a place where I know there's bees. Out on our big lawn out front, there is um, quite a lot of clover. And the bees really like these flowers. And so it didn't take me very long before I found a patch of clover that had several bees. I wondered about the behavior of bees closer to the ground. Like, does it matter to the bee? Does the bee notice it's close to the ground? Does it feel, is it more threatening for the bee because there are people walking by a lot on the lawn? Does that change their behavior. So, as you can see, I went out, didn't have any sorts of ideas in mind about what I was gonna find. I went out, I went to look for some bees. Um, I walked around, I found some bees, and I have walked away with more questions than answers. I definitely, <laughs> I have lots of questions, but I definitely still feel like I learned something about the bees right outside the door in the library, of the library. So if you would, I would encourage you to step outside your front door and see what bees you can find in your neighborhood. Or if you would like to come to the library, come take a look at the bees in our neighborhood and just see where that takes you. All right, thanks for journaling with us today. Thank you to Robert Martinez and everyone at Emma Proush Farm Park for inviting us out today. We had a lot of fun, learned a lot about bees, and gained a bunch of inspiration to help fill out our traveling nature journal. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.